welcome back to my channel. So we are officially beginning week 10 of our build. That means we're halfway through and I just went up to the house now and I said to Dom, Dom, you do you realize we're on week 10? We're halfway through our build. He was like, no, no, no. End of the week is when we're halfway through this build. So I looked up and I thought, we haven't really got much house <laughs> here to show that we're halfway through our build. But apparently, from now on in is gonna go really, really quickly. So this week is another exciting week because we are getting our steels put in. Once our steels are in, then they can start building the um, floor level for upstairs and then it'll hopefully just really start taking off from there. So they are gonna be craned into place on Tuesday this week. The reason they're getting craned in is because they're just so damn heavy. So obviously we haven't been able to have the tin house of the scaffolding put on our house yet because of the steels needing to be craned in but as soon as they are in this hat can go on and then we won't lose any build days going forward the weather this week does not look that good so I'm a little bit concerned because obviously they're doing loads and loads of prep work but they're doing lots of block work and if it rains they can't build so I'm keeping everything crossed that the rain is not going to stop any work this week Anyway, Chris and I are gonna go up to Kent as well this week to have a look at the sliding doors that we're going for. We are gonna be using the same company for our sliding doors as well as the two doors, like the, the storeroom door and the utility room door because we want the back of our house to look really uniform. So we're gonna use the same company for each of those doors and we're gonna go up there and just make sure that they're the right company we wanna use. We're gonna have a look at their product and just get to grips with it and so on. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get straight into showing you what's gonna happen. And the most exciting bit I can't wait to show you is obviously the massive steels going in. is absolutely killing our build oh my gosh this is the second day that because we don't have our tin hat on this is the second day the builders haven't been able to work they've gone for a couple of hours but because they need to like lay blocks and things like that they just can't do it in this torrential rain but the good news is we've had the big wall knocked down in our office room so i'm going to take you up a little bit later when there's a break in this weather and show you around. I've not been up to the house since that wall's been knocked down. That looks amazing. So now you can see like the true size that our office is going to be. It's basically doubled in size. So they've just been prepping the floor today with all the hardcore. I guess tomorrow they will um, put the sand on here, then the membrane and then the cement. So this morning, Chris and I are going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going up to Kent to visit the Ultraline showroom. That is the company we have decided to go for for our 7.2 meter sliding doors. We're going to have a three panel sliding door system. I actually found the company Ultraline on Instagram. I have been searching on Pinterest, Instagram, so many different other places for sliding doors and they were one of the companies that came up. So I got in touch, I got a quote, I had to send over um, our architect's drawings. I also needed to tell them where we obviously were. And then they wanted a video of like from the front door all through our house and to see the access to make sure that um, it was easy for them to get the big panes of glass in because our door is gonna be so big, they're gonna have massive panes of glass. They just need to make sure everything is right so they can come and actually do the job for you. So I sent that all over, I got a quote, but I also wanted to go up to their showroom to have a look at their product to make sure it was exactly what we wanted. So I'm gonna take you guys with me up to their showroom, show you their product. I am so excited about installing these into our home because I think it's gonna create such a a big wow factor in our home. We 
we've just turned up to Ultraline. I wanted to introduce you to Dan. Hello. Hi. Dan's going to take us around today and show us things in the showroom and just explain everything about the doors that we're going to be getting. So you ready Dan? I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> right, so these are the doors that we are going to be getting. They are like virtually frameless doors, but they're virtually frameless everywhere. So they're 20 mil at the bottom, up the side of the door at the top. And then also, which a lot of companies don't do, they're virtually frameless down here as well. They're 20 mil, so the handle that you pull them along with is included in the 20 mil here and because they have an electric locking system they don't have to have any locks on the doors so i'm going to take you inside and show you what i mean so if you push these doors across and shut them and then you just press this button here and your doors lock so when we were speaking to don before we were thinking of maybe either having like two sliding panels or four sliding panels and Dom said he wouldn't suggest it. He would go for an odd number. And I'm going to show you the reason why he said this, which now looking at the doors is quite obvious. So this is the two panel doors. So our front door is bang in the middle of the house. So when you open the front door, you would see, even though it is virtually frameless, you would see the kind of join between the two doors. Whereas you can see this is the three pane door and if our front door is bang in the middle, you have no join in the middle here. You just can look straight through to the garden and your joining points are there and there. So it's just a more of a streamlined look, which is what we're going for with our build. And also by having three panels, they open up more. You would only ever get 33% shut at any one time. Whereas if you had two panels, you would only ever be able to open up 50% of the panels at any one time. Right, so this is how the frame comes. So this is the sliding tracks, and then it comes on top of this base plate, which then is your drainage. So if you get any water in here, it'll trickle through the tracks into this drainage plate, and then they have little holes in here, so the water then goes out into the soak away in your patio. So these will be sunken into the ground like this so our tiles are going to come flush to the track and then all of this soak away bit is underneath here so you don't see any of it which i love because i just want it to be a seamless inside outside transition so that people don't trip over the track just been talking to dan about the tracks so because we want all of our glass panels to move our track is going to be quite exposed so this is where you wouldn't have all the tracks moving this is only one door moving so these tracks can be covered up but if i go over here you can see that this is going to be how our track would look. So we're gonna have three panels of glass and they're all gonna be able to move. So our track is going to be exposed like this. So all three panels can move. I think you would naturally just step over them like that. So it'll be fine. These are the four colors that Ultraline do. So we have got like a silver one here and then we've got the anthracite gray. We've got a black gray and then we have got a jet black as well. So I always thought I would go for this one. I've just put my fingers all over these. Sorry, they look a little bit fingerprinty. So I always thought this would be the color I'd go for, but I'm actually really loving this color. I feel like it's not quite as harsh and also our kitchen cabinets are going to be an off black so maybe this would go better if you put it next to the black you can tell it's not black but if you take the black away and you put it next to the anthracite gray it does look quite black so i think that might be the color we go for this is solar glass here yeah this is standard coated glass on the right so you can see slightly different light transmission it improves the u value by 0.1 okay Okay, but we're not gonna go for that, are we? Because we want as much light coming into our, much light and heat coming into our house as possible. <laughs> yeah, and the standard stuff's really quite good. Yeah, right? this is the standard stuff, and that was the- Solar coated. Solar coated one, but we've decided to just stick with the standard one because you don't get much heat in England anyway. You don't wanna block any of it out. Right, we have just got home from the Ultraline showroom. When I was there, I just felt like I got so excited because I felt like that is the end product that we are going to have in our house. Probably in about 10 weeks time, I would say. Because we're within three miles from the sea, we need to have the marine grade powder coating on our doors 
just because they're aluminium it just means that they won't start kind of eroding away from the salt in the air so we're going to have that on our doors we're not going to have the solar glass and i think on our journey home we decided we're actually going to go for the jet black we're going for jet black with all our windows and then the trim around our front door is also going to be jet black so i just feel it will all tie in with each other and it will just look really really nice it's a pretty big day at the house today all of our steels have arrived so that the builders can then put them in and then put the floor joists in and get going properly with our build as soon as these are in the tin hack we put onto our house because we have got some massive cranes here so they can lift the steels over because they're so big originally Dom did think that maybe they could do it with some like um what are those things called like a genie thing but they're just so big which is why they decided to keep the tin hat off get the steels craned in by these huge things so they can just take away any stress of having to try and lift them up by themselves <laughs> Is going to be picking up the weight what this wall was holding up before this other one here is going to be kind of where our roof upstairs finishes and starts to slope down and then this one here is obviously going to be above the sliding doors that one's actually a lot lower the sliding door one isn't it but i suppose it's because our roof slopes down at the back there up here we've had to have one more steel put up there this is where the end of the house is going to be so that's how much off our boundary we've had to come in so let me go onto this actually you can see it's about it's about a meter i think it is so yeah i'm gonna go up on the scaffolding and show you a bird's eye view this is what it looks like up here <laughs> looks very ugly and red and steely with massive massive bolts We have officially got to the end of week 10 and I feel like our house has progressed so much this week. We have got a little pergola going on in our house at the moment. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I mean. But I feel like our house just isn't open and exposed anymore. Even though it is open and exposed, I feel like so much has happened that when you come in, it's not just an empty shell that you look up to the sky with. But anyway, I'm going to go back to the front door now and I'm going to do a little walk through and show you what's been happening end of week 10 going into the house for a little walk through here we go this room oh look we've got some sand down so just going to put membrane next and then cement but all the pipes have now been taken out everything's leveled up and that's looking quite good but the biggest difference is here look it's like we've got a pergola <laughs> oh my gosh wow that looks so good. This morning when we actually came, none of this section was done. That section over there was half done, 
but the front section here wasn't. So over here, if I can explain where our dormers are going to go. So as you can see, we have got a double sort of timber bit there and a double timber bit there. That is how big our dormer is going to be. That is 1800 wide. So I'm guessing our um, windows probably like 15 or 1600 in there. And then over here on this side, we've got another double here, but obviously as we've got the extension now over into the storeroom, the other double will be just the other side of the, like this wall here. So um, that's why it's not up yet because they still have to finish that bit off. But it's looking really good. I feel like it's starting to take shape now. It feels much more enclosed in here now. Obviously before we'd come in and you'd look up and it would just be sky. If you can see up there, the scaffolders have put on the sort of like top plates so that the top hat can sit on top of that. The tin, fo tin foil, <laughs> the tin hat can sit on the top of there. So that's really, really starting to take shape. Just as the weather is going to get better, the builders are going to get blocked into this house. Um, everywhere else is the same. There's a steel up there, not sure what that's for, but I'm sure it's pretty important. Nothing else down here has changed. We can get back into this room now because it was just full of sort of timber before, so that's good. So I did a little bird's eye view of our pergola. And so we'll have our dormer here. Then here, this is going to be our ensuite. We'll have a Velux window. And then over on that side, we'll have Rory's dormer too. Right, so that's it for another week at the house. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.